for 1970 Mustang is still number one, with a choice of models like the Boss 302, where you can get options. You know, there's no denying that the 1970s was a great decade of cars of all kinds, but it was especially great for station wagons. Most people in the 70s drove a station wagon around town and they were always marked by standout features like the woodside paneling, vinyl seats and more. Although it's been over 40 years after the 1970s decade, we're still thinking about our beloved 1970s station wagons. This is the story of the Ford Country Squire station wagon. Positioned as the top-level station wagon of the Ford division, the Country Squire was distinguished by wood grain body side trim. Did you or your family own one? If so, we want to know what your thoughts are and memories of times had with your station wagon. Leave us your comments below. Now on with the video. The first generation of the Country Squire ran from 1950 through 1951. For the 1950 model year, Ford renamed its model lines. Initially, the station wagon was a custom deluxe with the all-new Country Squire name introduced in early 1950. For its second generation, the Country Squire was developed under a goal to maximize parts commonality between sedan and station wagon model lines. The third generation of the Country Squire ran from 1955 through 1956. Largely carried over from 1954, the Country Squire chassis retained its 115.5-inch wheelbase and chassis underpinnings. In a functional change, Ford upgraded to a 12-volt electrical system, allowing additional starting power and capability with electrical power options. Air conditioning was also introduced as an option. The fourth generation ran from 1957 through 1959. In a major shift for 1957, Ford station wagons no longer shared a body with a Mercury counterpart. Instead, the body was developed for the Edsel line of station wagons, with the Country Squire becoming the counterpart of the Edsel Bermuda, distinguished by its combination of wood grain sides and two-tone paint. Introducing a station wagon to suit every wagon need and fit every wagon budget. The fifth generation of the Country Squire ran from 1960 through 1964. In contrast to the fourth generation Country Squire, the fifth generation largely abandoned yearly body updates. The body design was more conservative, integrating the headlights into the grill and fairing the bumper more closely into the fenders. And this great new magic door gate lowers like a regular tailgate, swings open like a door. The sixth generation of the Country Squire ran from 1965 through 1968. In a major styling change, full-size Fords adopted vertically stacked headlamps, raising the hood line and enlarging the grille. In a design change that would last through its 1991 discontinuation, the 1965 Country Squire replaced the third row rear seat configuration for two optional flat folding rear seats facing towards the center of the cargo area, expanding seating to 10 passengers. You said Ford's Country Squire is more wagon than anyone else's, with options like the power vent window. I just want to try one more thing. Four by eight building panels flat on the floor. The seventh generation of the Country Squire ran from 1969 through 1978. The magic door gate, tailgate, was updated to a three-way design. It could now swing down like a tailgate or swing out with the window down or up. As part of the LTD line, the Country Squire wore similar interior trims, with the obvious exception of its simulated wood grain paneling. In 1971, the Country Squire would be given an extensive facelift with only the roof and tailgate carried over from the 1970 model. It would lose its hidden headlamps in the grille, 
For the 1973 model year, the Ford full-size car line was given a major update. The addition of a 5 mile per hour bumper would add over 6 inches in length to the LTD Country Squire by the end of 1974. These would also be the longest and heaviest station wagons ever produced by Ford. Hey, did your family or you own a Country Squire or any other station wagon? You know, they were so popular in the 60s and 70s. We want to know what your memories were of your, of your station wagon. Let us know. Leave us your comments below. We want to know. To better distinguish the LTD Country Squire, Ford returned hidden headlamps to the model, a feature associated with the top-line LTD Landau and Mercury Marquis models. The standard engine on all other full-size Ford sedans and wagons was the 351 Windsor V8. The Country Squire, however, came standard with the Cleveland 400M V8. For 1979, Ford downsized its full-size car lines. 11 inches shorter and nearly 1,000 pounds lighter than its 1978 predecessor, the redesigned Country Squire retained its eight-passenger seating capability with only slightly reduced cargo capacity. While retaining a V8 engine, the Country Squire shifted from the 400 and 460 V8 to the 302 cubic inch 4.9 liter and 351 cubic inch 5.8 liter Windsor V8s, sharing engines with the Ford Granada. During the mid-1980s, sales of full-size station wagons began to decline following the introduction of the Chrysler minivans and Ford Aerostar. By 1991, the Country Squire was the slowest selling Ford vehicle in North America. Production of the 1991 model ceased in December of 1990. Hey, that wraps up the video on the Ford Country Squire. You know, my memory of a, a Ford Country Squire is our family owning a 1968 Chevrolet Bel Air station wagon. and. We're visiting my aunt and uncle who just purchased a brand new 1974 Country Squire. And I remember, you know, my, my cousins going, hey, look at our station wagon. So, hey, what are your memories of a station wagon that maybe your family or you owned back in the day, the 60s, 70s? It doesn't matter whether it's a Country Squire, a Bel Air, Impala. Let us know in the comments below. We want to know what your memories were of your station wagon. Hey, thanks a lot for, um, you know, supporting the Boker Brothers YouTube channel and subscribing to our channel and liking our videos. It really helps us out. Hey, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. Help us out a little bit. As my brother says, help a brother out and, you know, subscribe to the Boker Brothers YouTube channel. Hey, this is Michael J. We'll see you again next weekend.